Looking for a way to get healthy? The Chef You and I program has the answer. Catherine Raker and chefs from around the nation will teach even the most inexperienced how to cook. Come into their kitchen and watch them take ordinary foods with loads of calories and fat and turn those foods into healthier dishes. You will be the first to get tips and ideas on foods that are easy to prepare. Now let's join Catherine and today's chef and learn how to make today's recipes. Hi, this is Catherine Raker of The Chef You and I. Tonight's show is going to be so fun. We're doing everything with appetizers. And these are some of my favorite ones and some of the ones I've just learned how to make. So the first one we're starting with tonight is a artichoke and spinach. And they're, cart they're squares that you make. And you cut them out of puff pastry. So I've already done some of them already. I've cut them all out. But my... Beautiful assistant, handsome assistant, gave me a three inch square, which we're going to do these. And I'm going to use this thing to get the pastry out so that I can roll the pastry out so then I can cut the squares. But you don't want to make it too thin. And so this is for a crowd. You'll have a lot of fun with it. So what I did was I, I kind of did it like this. And this is easy. Okay, so just cut them. Just use your, your knife and just cut them out like that. Simple, huh? And make sure that they're even and it doesn't make any difference because you're going to pinch them together in the end. So I'm going to put this over here. Now if my granddaughter, Cassie the cook, was here, she would have had all this done for me ahead of time, right? And then you wouldn't have been able to see it. So I wanted you to make sure you could see it. Now I buy my puff pastry frozen and then you let this thaw out, right? So it's pretty simple. And you could make them a little bit bigger if you wanted to, but these are, remember, appetizers. And if you have five or six appetizers, that's great. And if you have a crowd, you know, everybody likes something different, right? This is kind of a small one. So we'll do that and make it a, bit, a little bit bigger. But I could actually make it like this size, okay? So, and I'm gonna cut them, I'm going to cut this across this way and I'll use this for something else, okay? I use puff pastry all the time and it's actually great to have around no matter, you know, where or when because you never know when you're going to get a company and you may not have a bunch of things that you can get easily, but this is really simple. So now you have, look at, this is so simple, look at that. Easy to do. Now, I'm not going to make... I'm going to make enough, but I think I might even make some fruit ones. That would be good, huh? So if I have any extra, that's what I'm going to do. And so all of our recipes are up on our website. And you know we're everywhere. We're on Hulu. We're on Roku. We're on LinkedIn. We're on regular television. We're on cable. There isn't any place. And we're now on your news. And we're also going to be doing on some of my radio shows, a cooking, a cooking part to it. So I'm pretty excited about that because it's so fun. So here we go. We're almost done. And like I said, I'm going to give you the ingredients now. One tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, which I've already measured. Four scallions. We're going to chop those up in a minute. Two cups of roughly chopped artichoke cards, hearts. Artich two cups of roughly chopped artichoke hearts, 12 ounces of baby spinach, eight ounces of cream cheese, and you want it softened, two sheets of frozen puff pastry dough thawed, uh, and three ounces of Parmesan cheese, which I have right here. So I'm gonna do the last ones of these, and then we're gonna start, and then you're gonna fill them real fast, and this is fun. And you know, you could do this with your grandchildren or one of your friends or your husband, whatever. And that would be really cool, I think. So, but these are going to be delicious. Now, I'm going to do this one and then we're going to do one that my sister-in-law makes all the time. And it's a chili cheese with, with actually with um, cream cheese dip that is absolutely delicious. 
So now that we have these done, I'm going to put these over here on this. And I'll fill these in a little while, but we're going to go over to where the stove is. And we're going to actually heat up this pan. And we're going to actually put our scallions, chopped scallions, which I'm going to do in a minute. And uh, we're going to put those in. So I'll chop everything up ahead of time with you. So here we go. So I have these, I have three scallions. Now these are nice scallions. See that? You want, or four nice scallions. And you want to cut them up because you're going to, you're going to put these in and you're going to get them so they're like kind of wilted and your spinach wilted. But we have to put the onions in first. But we have to heat up the oil in a minute. And this is going to be absolutely delicious. I know you're going to love it. I know my husband will love it. And I know if my kids were there, they'd eat it up in two minutes. But they're not. So here we go. So this is something that you can have. And you could actually put this in the refrigerator if you had extra ones. And um, have them the next day. So here we go. So that should be enough. And I'm going to get rid of these extra ones right here. And that's that. And we also want to cut up our, we want two cups of artichokes. Two cups. So I'm going to cut this off. And then you're going to chop these up. So you can do this kind of ahead of time. And then put these in the refrigerator and then bake them. Okay. So, but I like to have stuff like this on hand because you never know who's going to drop over, right? It could be people from church. It could be anybody, your sister, your brother, your uncle, anybody. The next show that we're going to have is Father Andrew's coming to be on it. I'm very excited about that. He's so much fun. And... So he couldn't come tonight, so I decided to do just this. So we may do some beef bourguignon. Uh, one of the recipes that we're going to have in the near future is I have an adaptation of Julia Child's beef bourguignon, which I can't wait to make. I love making it. And I have the, the recipe is not hard. So you want two cups of this. And so i got to measure this out. So here we go. So let me just get um, a cup. Hold on. This is two cups, so we need to see how much we have here. Because I may need another can. So that's why I bought two cans. How about that? So I was right. It's two cans of these. And you want to drain, on the, drain off the liquid. And that's real important. We've got, hold on, we've got this. Let's wipe this up a little bit. Okay, put that in there. And then I'll drain these real quick. And I, I don't know if you like artichokes. I love artichokes. They are so, they're really good. You can do them in a lot of different, I've already done, I've done fresh artichokes, but for something like this, you know, you really want to have, you want to have something that's simple for you to use. So, I use them in salads, everything. Oh, sorry. Sometimes I forget what I'm doing. Okay, we'll get all this out. A lot of big ones in here. Wow. Let's see if I need any more than this. Right, whoops. Right. All right. All right. So you're going to mix this in with, uh, when we actually fry all this or heat it up, right? We're going to, I almost threw it away. That's not good. Um, anyhow, we're going to do that. We're almost there with the two cups. Why not put the rest of them in? Why not? We have to fill everything up here. So anyhow. Right, so I'll put this over here. So the other ingredients are, don't forget the three ounces of grated Parmesan cheese. And I always buy it fresh because it tastes so good. 
So here we go. And we're going to bring the camera over here when I start heating up the pan. We've already preheated the oven to 400 degrees. And you're going to have that on for, you're going to have it in the oven for 15 to 17 minutes. Okay. And let me get this. Okay. Let's wipe this up a little bit so you don't have that on there. Right. And we're almost ready. Right. I'll put this aside right here. Take this. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the stove and I'm going to heat up the frying pan and then add the onions there first. You can use garlic, but as you know, Catherine doesn't use garlic, but you can use garlic in this recipe. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to have, I'm going to have our cameraman come over here and I'm going to use the, the, Actually, we have two tablespoons of, or no, one tablespoon of virgin olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. And I added my gourmet duck fat spray to that. And we want to heat that up a little, right? And we're going to spray our pan that we're going to put the pastry on in just a minute. And I'm going to let that heat up a little. It doesn't take long. And you just want to leave it in there for a few minutes. But we want to say something about our wonderful sponsors. We can't forget the 360 cookware by Americraft. And that's this beautiful skillet that I use all the time. And we use all of their products and all of their pans and their cookware. Corn Huskers Kitchen, which makes that wonderful gourmet duck fat spray. And I haven't brought the vinegar, the balsamic vinegar uh, spray out yet, but we will. And don't forget um, that Hassel Cattle Company with Wagyu, and they are one of our, they are our beef sponsor, and they are, the food and the product is excellent. You need to try it. You can try it. They'll send it out to you frozen, and you'll get it, and you'll love it. Absolutely beautiful. Now we're going to put the onions in. It's about ready. So I'm going to use my Tusty. We're going to do this first. Now that's the four scallions, remember? And you want to get every bit of that. I love scallions. They're so delicious. So when you, you want them to be at least a little bit, not wilted especially, but, and I'm going to take my spinach and I'm going to do kind of, I'm not even going to cut it. I'm going to do this. So let's get these. They're going to sweat a little bit because remember, you're going to put them in the oven. So you see that? So just about a minute you want to do that. And then you want to add your spinach and your wonderful um, your wonderful artichoke hearts. So we have already done that. Now we're going to add, add the artichoke hearts. That's next. So that's good. That looks delicious. I can't believe that. If you've never tried artichoke hearts, they're, you know, these are the hearts themselves. When you get them, they're like this and they're point, they've got little prickly things on them. Now you're going to add your spinach to that. Now that looks like a lot of spinach, doesn't it? Well, it actually gets. It's like having, uh, when you're doing stir fry, you want this to wilt. So we turned our fan on and uh, so these are all fresh spinach leaves and I need to add a few more and we're going to do that. It, it, they, it called for 12 ounces of spinach leaves and I only have six here and that seems like a lot. So. Anyhow, we're going to let that kind of work itself out here. They have to become wilted. And they will really fast. That's cool. So we could add some, um, you could add some salt and pepper, but remember you're going to add cheese to this whole thing. So 
after this starts doing what we said it's going to do, it's going to start wilting, then you add in the cream cheese. So we'll see what happens. We're just going to take a little break here, and we'll be right back. And by the time we get back, these will wilt it. These will be all wilted, and then we'll add the cream cheese to it. We're back on the Chef You and I, and now our spinach is wilted along with our onions and our artichoke hearts. And now we're going to put in the cream cheese. And this is eight ounces of cream cheese, right? So I'm going to move this stuff out of the way. And we're going to add this to it. I've turned the heat down. And so since the cream cheese is basically almost melted, it's going to melt in here with this and then you're going to put this into those little squares that we made and you're going to you're going to pinch the squares and then you're going to put them on the wonderful uh, cookie sheet that 360 has and see how it looks now it really looks good so just scrape it off and I have some towel, paper towels here but it's heating up, so it's going to melt. It's melting. You can see that. And that's the consistency you want. Because these are like little pillow things that you put on, right? And you can see how, it's, how well it looks and what it looks like, okay? And that's what you're going to fill the... So you're going to take about a tablespoon or two and put it in the center of the square and then you're going to pinch it and you're going to put it onto the uh, 360 cookie sheet. Okay, we're about done with this. We've heated it up pretty well and we want to get all of that wonderful cream cheese in there. Okay, we're done with that. So, let me put this in here. We're going to actually spoon this onto the squares. So now it's all done, it's all melted, and we're going to put it into a glass dish right now, and then we're going to spoon it onto the, um, the actual squares. So you can see what it looks like. And then, then at the, after we pinch the squares, after we get it in there, then we're going to put Parmesan cheese on top of the squares and bake it for 15 to 17 minutes and you've got to watch it. Everybody's stove is different. And remember, we're doing it 400 degrees, so it's pretty high when you think about it. Okay, there we go. And what I'm going to do is soak this pan now. Okay, now we're ready to fill the pastry squares. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to spray the sheet that we're from 360 pans. And I'm not going to spray it a lot. I'm just going to put enough on there right of the corn huskers spray so that it doesn't that it comes out good so now what i'm going to do is i know this looks weird but i didn't have a big enough piece of um, parchment paper wait a minute i want to go like this i think it's this way hold on that makes sense hold on so we need this extra piece to fit so we can get all the squares on there. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fill the squares. So you just put a little bit in the center like that, right? And that's maybe, no, that's too much. You don't want to put too much in there. And then what you want to do is you want to actually fold it. There you go, and make little pockets, right? So there's one. Here's the second one. We'll just bring them all over here. And I made them actually bigger than their original recipe for the simple reason that um, actually they were only two and a half inches, and I just felt like that was not enough. Right. And just do that. Little, they look like little puffs, okay? There. And you could make them bigger if you wanted to. 
but I'm thinking a teaspoon would be better than a tablespoon. All right, let's just do that. That's good. That looks actually delicious. And so, like I said, you're going to be able to find all this up on our, our website. You can print out our recipes, and if you have recipes that you want actually to send us and you want us to try it out or make it more healthy, right, you can do that. And we'll be more than glad to give you credit if you want, if you live in the area, you can come and be on our show. But just send us an email at kraker123 at gmail. Okay, so what you want to do is bring the corners over and do this and do this. And if it's got a little bit too much, it's not the end of the world. Okay, but we can put it together like this and it still will be fine. See? Looks fine. So, let's do the next one. Okay, and I'll just do this instead of using the what you call it. But it's hot, I gotta tell you. Very hot. So, you do want to use the spoon. So, remember these puff up when you put them into the oven. It's puff pastry. So if you only put a little tiny bit in it, what are you going to get? Not much. So that's about it. I wouldn't put any more than that in it. Huh, that looks good. I mean, I think you're going to be surprised how they turn out. I think they're going to turn out really wonderful. And don't be afraid when you, when you do any of these recipes. You know, I mean, I test the recipes usually out first if I don't know the recipe or I haven't made it myself. But you could use this dip for a lot of different things. Okay, that's a little too much. Okay, so. But here we go. So the next recipe that we're going to make is actually one that I'm really excited about. It's a cream chip beef res dip recipe that one of my relatives, and I'm not sure if it, it was my husband's mother that actually gave me the, the recipe or not, or one of my friends, I'm not sure, but actually it's delicious. And if you've never had dried beef or cream chip beef, you got to try it. You can still get it on the marketplace and it's really good. So these are small, remember. I don't have that many. And this is two pieces of pastry. So you could use this for another, for another, um, I have some crescent rolls and I could make it with that too. Or not crescent rolls, but I have some uh, other puff pastry that you could take the centers out and you could put this in the center. So, or you could use it with crackers. Who knows? Probably tastes absolutely delicious, right? So these are really good. Think about what you put in it. You put in artichokes, you put in onions, you put in spinach, baby spinach. This looked more like regular spinach to me when I got it. So here you go. And then here's, we only have a few more to go. So I can't wait to see what these turn out like. And this is a good way. Do them ahead of time so you can test, you know, before you have people over or whatever, right? And I'm making this bigger because it's really thick, okay? So, anyhow, I don't need that much. I just need this much. But you want to get some of that artichoke in there, okay? There we go. And just fold it over. And there we go. It's a little pocket-like. Okay, and then remember what you're going to put on top of it. You're going to put cheese on top of it. Remember? That wonderful Parmesan grated cheese that I have over here. But this would make a great dip or a crack cracker spread, I think. So you, you know, try whatever you can. I have lots of things that 
I'm using for tonight's show that I found. So, here's another one. So, just think about that. And get your kids to, get your kids to actually help you with some of these things. And you'd be surprised your grandchildren, like my grandchildren started, my granddaughter started doing this at two and a half. And she's still doing it. She now knows how to make her own spaghetti. She was in Italy and she learned. And I'll tell you what, apparently she makes a really good Italian pasta now, which I can't wait to taste her pasta. So maybe on my birthday she'll make some for me. You never know, right? So, and if you want to learn how to cook, um, you know, you can look at our television shows. We do everything pretty easily. We've only got two more to go. Look at that. So, you don't want them to be too thick. So, here we go. And I kind of want to taste this. This looks delicious, actually. Right? So the next one is a really cool dip, and it's made with cream cheese. Almost everything I'm making tonight has got cream cheese. So I bought, and they were on sale, cream cheese was on sale, so, which makes it really nice. And I found all my ingredients at the store. And so I think you're going to really like this. I hope you do. And, you know, you can send your comments in. You can watch us on YouTube as well as all of our other areas, our stations all across the country. So we are now going to put the cheese on top of it. So you want to put some cheese on top of that. You know what? I think I'm going to, excuse me, I think I'm going to spray this and then put the cheese on top of it. How about that? There we go. And move this over. So you want to put about a half a teaspoon on each one of them okay so they'll come out really golden brown right so we're going to take a short break and then when we come back I'll put these in the oven the 400 degree oven and when we come back I'll have the next wonderful recipe which is the cream cheese dip with with dried beef. Okay, we'll be right back after these important messages. And don't forget to go to our website at thechefuni.com and you'll see everything. We'll be right back. We're back on the Chef You and I, and our next recipe is dried chef beef cheese dip. And so you need one eight ounce cream cheese, which we have right here that we are going to put in the microwave. We need one to two to three ounces of dried beef chopped fine, one fourth cup of walnuts, one fourth cup of sour cream, two tablespoons of chopped onion right here, and pepper, and two tablespoons of milk. So we're going to go ahead and do the dried beef and we're, cho we're chopping it up fine. Okay, and that's what you want to do because this is a dip. And you could have this for a lot of people and really enjoy it. So we made uh, a wonderful display right there that we're going to have dippers and we're going to have pretzels. And those pretzels are these wonderful Dots pretzels and pita chips and the other, um, those are scoopers. So... Here we go. Here we're going to do this. Now, what we need to do with this is this cream cheese needs to go into the microwave for 45 seconds until the cheese is really soft. And then we'll add the remaining ingredients. So let's put that in there. All right. Around 45 to 45 to... 50, I would say, to melt it, okay? Then we're going to add this, and then we're going to add our other ingredients, which are going to be really good. And it's a really simple dip. 
absolutely simple. Anybody can do this. So I need to get a bowl from up there. So I'll have my producer get that for me. It looks really melted. So we're going to take this and now we're going to add all of our ingredients, right? We're going to stir it up. See how, look at how that melted. Isn't that nice? So we're going to add our ingredients, right? The chip beef, right? And we're going to add the nuts. Now you don't have to use nuts. If you're allergic to nuts, don't eat nuts, right? Then the onion, and that's two tablespoons of onion. And we could actually make put more sour cream in this if we wanted to. And then don't forget to use, this is the last ingredient, this is the sour cream. And we put that in there. And don't forget the milk. And don't forget the pepper. All right. I'm going to mix six up. All right. I'm going to add more beef to it. Excuse me. And why not use all of that good beef? It's really good. And I got that a really good price. And I mean, we remember as kids, when I was growing up, we had cream chip beef. And that was a meal on toast. So that looks really good. I might add a little bit more pepper to that. And then we're going to put it in the bowl. And it's done. That's how simple that was. Look at how simple that was. It's pretty easy, right? So let me wash my hand off. And then we're going to make my favorite one that my wonderful sister-in-law, Patty, came up with this wonderful dish. And I'm really excited about it because I have wanted to make it for a long time. But anybody can make it. Now, you can use your own chili, but you have to drain a lot of the water or the, the sauce off of it. Or you can use uh, canned chili without beans, whatever. But here we go. We're going to put this into here, and this is the way we're going to serve it. And your people will love it. So don't forget to go to our website to try this. Easy, simple recipe. You can do this. Oops. I'm going to clean that off a little bit. Hold on. All right. Okay. So... We're going to put this on top of here, right? And there you have a perfect dip. We'll save the rest of it, you know, for, for later. And I think you'll really enjoy it. So look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Easy to do. We need to take a short break, and I'll be right back. And we're going to make wonderful patties, wonderful chili dip. We'll be right back. We're back on The Chef, you and I, and we're making my sister-in-law, Patty's wonderful chili dip. And you start off with eight ounces of uh, Philadelphia cream cheese, okay? And what you do, and that's why I have gloves on right now, because I'm going, they're clean gloves, and what I'm going to do is actually spread it in the pan, but I'm gonna wipe my hands off real quick. But almost everything we've made tonight is made with cream cheese. And I really got a bargain in the cream cheese, so I'm gonna spread this, right, all over the bottom of it, right? Okay. Well, I might be able to do it easier with my hands, so let's do it. So you just wanna spread it all the way over at the other end of this. And that's the bottom layer, is the cream cheese, okay? Right, here we go. Tell you what, having these gloves makes it a lot easier. And it's not as messy. You want to spread that all over the bottom, because that's the bottom layer. And then you're going to put the chili on the top of this, and then you're going to put cheese. So it's a three-layer thing, okay? 
and it's a dip. You could actually put more cream cheese if you wanted to on the bottom. I think I've used a lot of cream cheese tonight, though. All right, here we go. And I'm going to clean that up a little bit so it looks nice, actually. All right. And all right. So then the next layer, actually, is the next layer is this. Hold on a second. I'm going to get rid of the gloves now. All right. Here we go. All right. And then I'm going to take some paper towels and wipe the cream cheese actually off of here on the sides and everything. Okay. So it looks nice. Because I don't like messy. It may look like I'm messy, but actually I like to have it look clean. And that's important when you're when you're doing a cooking show or anything, right? So let's just get that off. And then we're going to add the chili to the top of this. So the chili goes on like that, right? I'm going to get all of that chili in there. And this is, I happen to be using Cincinnati's Greek Skyline Chili in this. And it's really, if you've never had Greek Chili, uh, it's really cool. My whole family loves it. We grew up on it. And it's a family tradition, actually. So then what you do is you add, it must be a pepper or something put that in there. Okay, then what you want to do is you want to add your cheese on top of it. That's the last thing. And then you put it in the oven. And it all blends so cool. You'll love it. So this is really a simple, simple hors d'oeuvre. And every time I go over to Pat's, my sister-in-law, she has this. And everybody loves it. So, but you will love it too. You can use your own chili. You can use canned chili without beans. You know, make it easy on yourself if you don't want to cook a lot. So, and when you taste this, you'll love it. So we're going to put this in the oven. And what we're going to do then is we're going to make our tacos, our mini tacos. We'll be right back on The Chef You and I after this. I'm going to clean this We're back on The Chef You and I, and I'm really excited because I love tacos. Well, these are mini tacos. You can make beef, you can make fish, you can make all kinds of different tacos today. So this is really a nice little party kind of thing that you can do, and we can just stand those up like that, and you've got it made in the shade, right? So we're going to fill those up in a few minutes, but we're going to use our Wagyu beef uh, from Hassel Cattle Company, and we need to actually brown the beef, add the taco sauce to it, and then we'll be able to actually build the tacos. So let's come over here to the stove. I've got the Wagyu beef in here. This is a pound of Wagyu beef. It's ground beef, and it doesn't seem like it has a lot of actually a lot of oil or anything in it, right? So we're just going to let that brown a little bit. And we want to also show you what our dip looks like. And we're going to put that on a dish. And actually, we're going to serve it with, we would serve it with scoopers or whatever you'd like to have. So that's a dip in itself. So that's our chili dip. So we're just going to wait till this gets and then we're going to add our, um, our wonderful, and you don't have to wait until it browns. You can do this ahead of time. Cut this open. And this is the taco sauce. But you know what? I'm going to spray this beef a little bit with our 
wonderful spray or duck pad spray, which I use for everything, by the way. And it's great. It works really well. And it won't take long for this to brown, right? So I'm just going to let it brown a little bit. Our taco seasoning, okay, we're going to use with this for the tacos. And almost every taco package has the dry ingredients to add to your ground beef or whatever else you're doing. There's a lot of people like fish tacos today. They, and if you're organic and you're a vegetarian, you can use tofu, you can use almost anything. So look at how nice that beef is. And it's so delicious. I gotta tell you, I love their beef. And doesn't have a lot of fat in it, which makes it really nice. So we're almost getting it almost done. Look at that. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of water to it. Let's see, just a little. And you'll find this on our website as well. All right, here we go. Now what I'm gonna do is add this to it. All right, and then add some water to it. And then I may need a little bit more. But look at how easy that was to do. And it takes no time. I mean, my daughter and my granddaughter, they love to do Taco Tuesdays. Every Tuesday is Taco Tuesday. Especially if you're working, it just makes it easier. That's enough water because that's going to boil away. Ouch. That's going to boil away. And I'm going to turn this down and then just let it simmer until all the water is basically out of it. But you don't want it to be too salty because it tends to be not the beef, but the, the dried uh, package taco. And so we're going to use these little taco shells that are about this big. They're mini tacos. First time I've seen them at the store. I'm pretty excited about it because a lot of times people can't, they could eat maybe two or three of those, but you know, the bigger tacos, sometimes you can't eat that many. Look at how nice that looks. Wow, that looks really great. Now you could have with this, you could have, um, you know, like watermelon and melon uh, for the appetizer, put it together. We've done that on our show before. And it makes it really a nice afternoon. You, get this, you can make a meal into this, actually, I think. So it's almost done. Then we're going to put it together. And guess what? We'll be done. And we're going to show you everything we did. I'm so excited. So we're going to turn this off. And we're going to get ready and we're going to chop up this lettuce okay and this is this is the kind of lettuce I love this is actually uh, like a like almost like a bib lettuce or or it's a soft lettuce and these are really good and you can grow these in your garden and this is there this is out right now okay and it's easy for these little tiny uh, taco shells to use this. I mean, you could even use your scissors and cut this, right? And go like that and just trim it like that or just use your knife. So some people like onions on theirs and cheese and all kinds of different things. So we're just going to use, we're just going to use uh, the tomatoes that my assistant editor actually, uh, camera guy, everything actually did for me and then a new thing that we bought to chop up tomatoes perfectly and I love it it's so fun and I know he has fun doing it so and I don't know if that was one or two tomatoes I'm not sure anyhow so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually put the meat I'm gonna 
I'm going to take some of the liquid off. I'm going to, it's turned off now. So let me put it into a bowl and we're going to do it and show you how to do it. Right? That should be, we'll leave some of it for later. Okay, we'll make a few of these and then you can see the complete package. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to use the beef first and put it in there, right? And so there's not, a, these are little, so you don't have to put a lot in, right? You can see what I'm doing. I'll show you. So that would be as much as I would fill it, okay? Can you see that? Okay. So then I would use my tomatoes, right? And a few things of lettuce, right? And then a couple things of cheese. And I have the cheese right here. And we'll do that. And then we'll actually put it in like that. And then I'll put another one. So you can see what I'm doing so that we can finish the show. I know that my children love tacos. They're all grown up and have kids of their own. And I have, some of them even have grandchildren now. And they love, love tacos. That was an easy meal for us as they were growing up, you know. And inexpensive, because it's expensive when you're doing things like that. That's enough lettuce. And then put a little things, a few things of cheese on it. Right? And this gets a little messy, but who cares? I'm going to clean it up anyhow. So do that. Right? Like that. Okay. And then we'll just finish this. And, you know, this is a quick and easy dinner for you or snacks. I would have this for lunch because these things are so little. Right? Right. That's right. I love these tomatoes. Just a little bit of lettuce. Because a lot of people don't like lettuce. And then cheese. Right? There we go. Actually, you could put three here. Right? That's cool. We'll do this real quick. And then we'll bring everything... We'll bring everything onto the... Um, to the counter and you can see everything we make and then all of the recipes are going to be up on our website at the chef you and i so we'll be right back in a minute and we'll show you everything that we have done okay we're back on the chef you and i and this is the part i love is getting to eat all this wonderful beautiful food i want to thank our sponsors and that is corn huskers gourmet duck fat spray Hassel Cattle Company, with the best Wagyu beef you've ever had. Also, 360 pans. I don't know what I'd do without those pans. They're absolutely wonderful by AmeriCraft. And thank my wonderful producer and editor. I want to thank him very much for all he does. And now we get to talk about the food and say goodbye. So the first thing that we made was this beautiful wonderful artichoke and spinach with pastry and cream cheese and made them into these beautiful little puffs and they are delicious absolutely you could add beef to that but this is really a great thing for vegetarians and then we made the dried beef cheese with cream cheese dip and we have these wonderful things that you can dip into it and eat and then we have Patty's wonderful, I love this, chili dip with cream cheese on the bottom, then the chili, and then the, ground, and then the wonderful cheese on the top. So what you can do is what I always love to do about this is you can go down in there and get everything that you need for that and then put it on a plate. And what I love about it, it's really hot still, so you'd, wanna, you'd want it to actually get a little bit uh, harder. Maybe put it in the refrigerator or something. And then you could do the same thing here. You can go in here and get this wonderful dip too. And it is delicious. I've got to tell you, I tried it. I tried all of it and it's delicious. So I want to say thank you. And don't forget the little small mini, mini uh, tacos made with Wagyu beef, tomatoes, lettuce, and cheese. And that is our appetizer show 
for today. Thank you so much for joining me today on Catherine Rakers, The Chef You and I. Don't forget to go to our website at thechefyouandi.com where you'll see everything. And thank you and have a wonderful, wonderful evening or feast like this. It's so easy to make. You can all do it. See you soon. Thanks for joining us on The Chef You and I Show today. We'll be back next week with another great and healthy recipe. Don't forget to visit our website, thechefyouandi.com, for all of our featured recipes, cooking tips, and clips of the show.